excuse me welcome back to in the kitchen with pen now i'm making this video cooking this dinner on easter sunday but it's a dinner that can be cooked any time of year if you can afford to buy lamb lamb is exorbitantly expensive and when you consider that we actually produce our own lambs in the United Kingdom. It's it's quite frightening, the price. So today we have a leg of lamb and the only reason we have a leg of lamb is because it was half price. Before Easter, all the shops, all the main supermarkets were making um, offers on their meat, lamb in particular. So I have a whole leg of lamb and that cost me £13 something, still a lot of money, but it will do leftovers, will do other dinners. So we've got roast lamb, we've also got roast potatoes and they're in there. And those of you who watch my uh, shopping video will remember I bought the um, Golden Edwards from Tesco's. So they're those. We've got carrots that I've just cut into batons. We have my favourites, arana beans. And we have some tender stem broccoli. But the lamb, you could just roast it as it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stud it with garlic and rosemary. And if you come on down, I'll show you how. Right, what I've done is I've taken a sharp pointy knife and I have just made slits all over the lamb. And what I'm going to do is I've got my garlic and my garlic isn't um, whole cloves. I've sliced the cloves so they look like so. And I'm just going to pop the garlic in all over these little holes that I've created. I have already done the underside. So do both sides if you can. And if you find that your hole isn't big enough, just give it a, put your knife in. Give a little wiggle, give a little wiggle and it will go in. So, we're just going to do that with our garlic and then the other holes, not all of them, we're going to pop the rosemary in. And this is fresh rosemary sprigs and literally all I'm doing is I am pushing them in and this just imparts some flavour into the roast lamb. Now, some people don't like the idea of garlic in there. And that's fine. It's all about what you like. So maybe don't put the garlic in. Use garlic powder over the top. Or, here's an idea. When you slice it, make sure that those people that don't like the garlic actually in their meat they like the flavor but don't want a piece of garlic just make sure you take the garlic out of the pieces that they're going to be eating so i'm going to carry on with this and we'll be back right and there we go we have our garlic and rosemary studded leg of lamb now <coughs> this will also need to be seasoned but actually I may well season it now because it won't be long before I put it in the oven. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to season it with salt and pepper. And uh, let's do that now then. That's some Himalayan salt. And some freshly cracked black pepper. And that's all it will need. So... My decision now is, do I cook it in my Megazone or in the Ninja 10 in 1 oven? I think we'll go for the Megazone, but give me a minute to sort ourselves out. Now, lamb, as you know, is a fatty meat, so I have put some water underneath the um, trays and I've left those in so that 
any fat will just drip through into the bottom of the pan. So, in we go. Oops, in we go. Oh, that'll be lovely. Right, and I'm just going to pop it in and then I shall move you to show you how we're going to cook it. Right then, we need to switch our mega zone on and we're obviously going to be roasting and we will roast at 190 and I'm going to go I'm going to go an hour and a half but after half an hour I will switch the temperature down so we have to press mega zone because we're using both sides and then we press start and a, a computer set timer for 30 minutes 30 minutes starting now so my alarm will go off on the device in the kitchen so i know that it's had 30 minutes and then i'll come and turn it down now an absolute classic side sauce your lamb is mint sauce and you can buy jars of it nothing wrong with it really quite good <coughs> But, excuse me, my mum always made her own. We had it growing in the garden. And just a little point, if you put mint in your garden to grow, sit it into a pot. Because if you don't, it will go everywhere. There were times as mum got older, we had all these various mints in the garden actually in the grass yet spear mint she had pineapple mint she had apple mint and that was actually in <coughs> the grass so what i've got is i've got some mint leaves here and all i'm going to do is i am going to chop them up now there's no doubt at all that you could have put these into a food processor and pulse them to chop the mint up but I'm just thinking well why make more washing up for myself or why make more washing up for yourself now what mint does need is it needs just a little sweetness so I'm going to pop just a teaspoon of granulated sugar into my dish, which is that. Then I'm going to add some boiled water, and the boiled water will start to cook the mint as well as melt. And when I say cook, wilt the mint <coughs> as well as <coughs> dissolve the sugar. So we've got our sugar, we've got our hot water, <coughs> and now we need our mint, and that's going in. I mean, you know, it's not uniform. We've got some big bits, some smaller bits, but the smell is just amazing. <coughs> I mean, you can be fancy. You can use a cider vinegar, an apple vinegar, a, a sherry vinegar. Me, coming old school, more vinegar. And all I need to do is just give that a little stir. just let the flavours infuse and I will have a beautiful fresh mint sauce to go on my delicious lamb. Right so I am going to taste it but it's going to be a bit in the raw. into the fridge and be served with our dinner. I have just taken a sneaky peek and we're not going to need the whole um, 30 minutes to brown and I'll show you why. Look at that, it's got 
And what I like about Blan is these crusty bits of fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just pop that back in for a moment, get my trivet, stand that on there, and we're just going to see, it's nowhere near cooked, I know that, I want it to get to at least 60, but let's just see what we're at. Right. we're mid 20s but that's 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 absolutely fine now i've got the color that i want now on the outside it's higher obviously but when i go right into the center we are mid 20s so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go down to i think i'll go down to 160 for the remainder of this cook and um I think it's looking really quite nice, don't you? Right, that's it. I'm leaving you now, I promise, until it's cooked. Right, we're cooked. So it's on a serving platter and we're over 70 degrees, so we are cooked. 60 degrees, 63 degrees is fine for lamb. You don't need to go to 70 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is we don't eat the woody um, rosemary. Goodness me, what is going on with my memory? I can't remember what I'm saying. The rosemary, so I'm taking that out, but I am leaving the garlic in. And then I'm going to cover this. And I'm going to leave it, oh, probably a minimum of half an hour possibly an hour before I carve because as I've said to you before it will give the meat that time that it needs to relax once again and it will make it beautifully tender when we eat but for now that is our leg of lamb cooked. Right then, our roast lamb cooked, cooled, and everything else cooked with to go alongside. The potatoes were cooked in the Ninja Flexi Draw 2, 20 minutes. Um, I started at 180, and then for the remain, remaining seven minutes, I went up to 200. And as you can see, they look perfect. They were parboiled for seven minutes first. Um, Steve has some mashed potato. We have tender stem broccoli. We have carrots. We have um, runner beans. And the remaining, um, gosh, I keep telling you about my memory, don't I? The remaining, um, garlic I roasted that too for about five minutes so I'm just going to put on some gravy nice thick gravy that has been made with all the juices from the resting meat as you can see I just picked up look there's actually a piece of meat there so you can see right so you know what happens now I take this through to Steve then we come back for the taste Well then, how does that look? And I made the mint sauce, didn't I? So I've got to have mint sauce. So, and do you know, I, I may have told you this before, but when I was little, my mum used to make me all my vegetables. What a wicked mum. No, she wasn't. She knew what to do. But the only way I could eat them is with mint sauce. So I used to have mint sauce on every single Sunday roast and if there were vegetables in the week that I didn't like I mean not on peas you know but oh, I was just a weird child but with mint sauce I could eat them so let's get a knife and fork out and I'll clean and it's it's the lamb it's the lamb that I want to taste so Oh my gosh. Right, and this piece of lamb has got a beautiful piece of garlic that's been cooked with it too. 
just going to get a little bit of the gravy and I'll drop the garlic. I'm not going to lie to you, I tried it as I cut it and it's lovely. Oh, that is so nice. Roast lamb. Absolutely superb. So, sadly, with the price of it, it is a dish for high days and holidays. But when you cook it, don't overcook it. Get it to 60 degrees and it is cooked. I promise you, I promise you, if you don't like any pink in your meat, then go higher. But 60 degrees is enough. So, Easter Sunday, roast lamb dinner. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, write them down below. And please share with all your friends. And I'll see you again very soon in the kitchen with Pen. Bye bye.